Hey, my friends, it's Tom with Watson River. Thanks for joining me today. We got another good day, a little rainy here in the middle of Connecticut. So you might hear some rain throughout the video, but uh, it's a good day. The Lord made us another good day to serve him and we will rejoice and be glad in it because he is good. He is good. All right. So Israel's on very high alert right now. Everyone's waiting to see what Iran does after Israel attacked that consulate in Damascus last week. And Iran is threatening retaliatory strikes. Everyone thinks it's going to happen. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that. First, I'm, I'm going to remind you, as I do once in a while, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. I'm just a dude who loves the Lord. And I love talking about the Lord. So grab a snack, something to eat and drink. Ooh, have peanut butter and banana on rye bread that that's good all right or grab whatever you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the lord let's get busy before we get to news i want to read some scriptures and i'm going to my trusty god's promises for your every need book i love this it is uh it's a bit i don't sell it i don't sell anything um, but it is available. I got it off a shelf at Barnes and Noble. It's, it's at all the online booksellers and it, this is the new King James version. There's also, I think other versions and, uh, I really enjoy this. So I'm on page 23. Jesus is your deliverer. So let's read a few scriptures because these are beautiful. Isaiah 61 verse one, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. It's beautiful. Let's go to John chapter 8, verses 32 and 36. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus set us free. So many people think, I don't want to become a Christian because man, they're going to put me in chains. They're going to limit everything I can do. I won't be able to do this. That. No, no, no. Jesus breaks the chains. Breaks the chains. Whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Uh, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I love that. Let's do a couple more. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes, amen. There's freedom. He sets us free. I'm not saying, don't mistake that for me saying, oh, you can sin all you want. You're free to sin. That's not the freedom I'm talking about. Because, uh, you know, he's rescued us with his blood from our sin. But it's not a, never a license to sin. And you know what? The bottom line is when you love the Lord, you really, you really are tortured by your sin. You know, so whenever someone writes to me and says, I'm really, oh, Tom, what am I going to do? I'm just tortured. I'm like, what's going on? They're like, oh. These sins, I do this sin, it drives me crazy. I'm like, well, you know what? You're in a pretty good place right now because you hate you hate your sin. If you wrote to me and said, oh, I'm free in Christ, so I'm doing this, this, and this, I don't care, I'd be concerned. All right, let's go to, uh, let's do one more. Let's do Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. That's beautiful. That blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony is amazing. All right. Putting my book away. All right. Let's look at what's going on today. Okay. You guys okay? You okay? Let me know. Let me know. I hope you guys are okay. Everybody's recovering from the solar eclipse mania. <laughs> and do I think a few days later, it's still a sign of judgment coming to America? I happen to think it is. You know, we'll see. All right. Let's see. Israel and the U.S. are on high alert as Iran vows punishment for the Syria strike. Uh, Israel's military and American troops across the Middle East have been bracing for 
expected retaliation by Iran and its proxies for the Israeli airstrikes that killed seven Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps officials in Damascus early last week. Iran's Supreme Leader Khomeini reiterated on Wednesday, yesterday, that Israel must and shall be punished for the strikes. When they attack the consulate, it is as if they attacked our soil, he said. Israeli leaders have vowed to respond in kind, upping the ante with firm warnings against Iran. Yeah, this is, you know, that happened well early. I think it happened about a week ago, this past Monday. It's been a while. I'm kind of surprised that Iran hasn't done anything yet. But they're, Israel's on high alert, like right now. You know, they're just waiting to see what's going to happen. This is from the Times of Israel. The U.S. said to believe Iranian attack on Israel is imminent, matter of when, not if. Uh, the U.S. believes a major Iranian attack on Israel is imminent and could happen in the coming days, according to a report yesterday, Wednesday, as Iran reiterated its vow to retaliate for an alleged Israeli strike in Syria that killed two generals among several Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps officers. Citing people familiar with U.S. and Israeli intelligence assessments, Bloomberg reported Iran could launch strikes involving high-precision missiles and drones targeting military and government sites in Israel. One of the people quoted in the report said it's not a matter of when. Of when it, I'm sorry, it is a matter of when, not a matter of if. Tehran will attack Israel. From Israel Radar, right before I hit record, Israel on high alert for attack. Fighter jets patrol Israel's airspace to counter the Iran Axis assault. The IDF works with U.S. and regional partners on early detection of missiles, drones. Intelligence agencies monitor two IRGC ships in the Red Sea and Persian Gulf to foil naval strike. So, you know, we're going to see what happens in these coming days. This stuff, there's so much talk of wars and rumors of wars in these last days. It doesn't trouble me. It shouldn't trouble you if you belong to the Lord. It really shouldn't. We're very close to the pre-tribulation rapture. We're very close. So this stuff, don't, you know, just lean into Jesus. You know, if I ever get moments here and there where all of a sudden world news freaks me out, it's rare, but I do get it once in a while. I'll get a little overwhelmed and I'm like, wait, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has mapped out my entire life and he has an incredible future for me. And he's been with me since the beginning, even when I left him. So I trust him. He's good. He's good. This is from U.S. News and World Report. Russia tells citizens refrain from travel to the Middle East. This is from early this morning. Russia's foreign ministry told citizens on Thursday that they should refrain from traveling to the Middle East, especially to Israel, Lebanon, and the Palestinian territories. The tense situation in the Middle East re region persists, said the foreign ministry, which first issued, issued such travel advice in October when it urged Russians not to visit Israel and the Palestinian territories after Hamas attacked Israel. The situation in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict zone, as well as in the area of the blue line between Lebanon and Israel, remains unstable. So Russia's saying, don't travel there. And uh, there you go. Also, when was this? This is from late last night, Jerusalem Post. A senior American general to visit Israel in light of looming Iranian attack. And I think he's there right now. General Karilla will meet with the IDF Chief of Staff Halevi and Defense Minister Gallant against the backdrop of the joint preparation of the U.S. and Israel against an Iranian attack using ballistic missiles, drones, cruise missiles against targets in Israel, which may further escalate the conflict in the region. So he's there now. Um, you know, we'll see what goes on. This is from Israel Radar. This is uh, yesterday. IDF confirms three sons of Hamas leader Hanea have been eliminated in a Gaza airstrike. They were engaged in terror activity. Three grandsons, grandsons were also killed in the strike. The army carried out the attack based on precise real-time intelligence without updating Netanyahu or Defense Minister Gallant in advance. So Netanyahu and Gallant didn't know it and they... Got rid of three sons and three grandsons of this terrorist dude. 
I hate war. I can't wait to war with Jesus, honestly. I can't wait. It'll be a good day. All right, this is from Israel today. This evening, meaning tonight, uh, at 7 p.m. Israel time, there will be a demonstration for victory outside of Prime Minister's residence in Jerusalem. Protesters will insist that the government and army put even greater military pressure on Hamas in order to free the hostages and keep their promise to achieve total victory. This contrasts with demonstrations in Tel Aviv, which receive far more media coverage, where left-leaning movements are pressing for a ceasefire in order to free the hostages. So that's happening tonight in Israel. What else? What else? Maybe we should just take a break and have a cookie. <laughs> I'm hungry this morning, you know. I'm not hungry a lot of times in the morning, but this morning I'm hungry. This is from the Times of Israel. U.S. officials said to fear most of the hostages held by Hamas could be dead. U.S. officials tell the Wall Street Journal that there are fears that most of the Israeli hostages in Hamas captivity could be dead. The report comes amid talks to secure a hostage release deal and a truce with some Hamas sources indicating that they were unable to provide 40 living hostages from the elderly women and female soldiers that Israel is demanding. It is believed that 129 hostages abducted by Hamas on October 7th remain in Gaza. The IDF has confirmed the deaths of 34 of those still held by Hamas, citing intelligence and findings obtained by troops operating in Gaza. Pray for those people and their families. I always tell you, pray for everyone over there because that's what Jesus would want us to do. Jesus isn't selective about who to pray for. If if you're on earth and you have breath in your lungs, even if you're doing very demonic things, Jesus would not say, well, forget them. You know, don't pray for them. He would say, pray for them. He doesn't want anyone to perish. This is from Insider Paper showing this crazy world we live in. Europe must prepare for potential war as a full-scale conflict on the continent beyond Ukraine is no longer a fantasy, the EU's chief diplomat has warned. This is what the end times look like, right? We don't say it to scare, we say it to prepare. And as um, what's Jan Markello he says, what does she say? It's not... It's all falling into place. The world looks like it's... Oh, I'm, I'm messing it up. But you guys know what I'm saying. It's not... Oh, forget it. I had a gastular brain moment. <laughs> a nicer way of saying what I was going to say. All right, insider paper. Nope, we already said that. Let's go to the Times of Israel. After the ISIS attack in Moscow, the FBI chief warned similar plans may be brewing in the U.S. The FBI is concerned about the possibility of an organized attack in the United States, similar to the one that killed scores of people at a Russian concert hall last month. The Bureau's director is set to tell a House of Representative panel today on Thursday. Looking back over my career in law enforcement, I would be hard-pressed to think of a time where so many threats to our public safety and national security were so elevated all at once, Christopher Ray is planning to tell lawmakers during a budget hearing. But that is the case as I sit here today. That's what he's going to say today. And, uh, you know, you leave the borders open and stuff happens. You know, I don't worry about it. The Lord's in control. The Lord's in control. Oh, man. Get ready for this. Kim Jong-un, this is from Newsweek. Kim Jong-un threatens North Korea's enemies with a man drum roll. Brrr, death blow. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, it's not funny. It's not funny. Uh, now is the time to be more thoroughly prepared for a war than ever. Kim Jong-un was quoted as saying, adding that the Democratic People's Republic of Korea should be more firmly and perfectly prepared for a war if North Korea's enemy opts for military confrontation, Kim reportedly said, without naming any country, the DPRK will deal a, drumroll, death blow to the enemy without hesitation by mobilizing all means in its possessions. Death blow? Kim, really? He needs a new marketing campaign because, you know, 
death blow sounds like a i don't know a heavy metal band from the 80s ladies and gentlemen death blow <laughs> i'm sorry all right uh terrible weather going on and uh says one dead in mississippi as tornadoes flash flooding and large hail wreak havoc across the southern u.s one person was reported dead in Mississippi on Wednesday as more than 30 million people across central Gulf Coast states like Louisiana and Alabama and stretching further into the southeastern U.S. were under severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings. Widespread severe weather has dumped heavy rain as well as caused storm damage, rescues, and an evacuation in the region. Um, yeah, it was bad. I saw video and uh, pray for pray for all the people down there and our brothers and sisters we have so many down there this this one really concerned me this next one um national weather service confirms at least one ef1 tornado in slidell is that how you say it slidell louisiana uh several injuries reported damage from a probable tornado in slidell and a powerful line of storms wednesday april 10th left several people injured and caused widespread and catastrophic damage throughout st Tamani Parish officials said we haven't seen this much damage since Hurricane Katrina Slidell Mayor Greg Comer told Fox 8. I have a very good, there's a viewer 95 years old his name's Jules and he writes to me at least once a week sometimes twice a week He, I get the mail and the, you know, the letters in the mail. He writes me these letters once or twice a week he lives in Slidell so I was praying for him this morning. I hope he's safe. And he just writes these letters, short letters, 95 years old, of total and complete encouragement. I love this brother. I can't, I can't wait to meet him and many of you on the other side. I just can't wait. But yeah, pray for the people down there. And I hope my friend Jules is okay. Um, what else? 43 earthquakes over 4.0 in the last 24 hours and six of them over 5.0. So there you go. All right. I may need my Clown World sound effect because we may take a little stroll in Clown World. But this one, you know what I'm going to say probably when I read this. But this is from Insider Paper. Global warming will decimate G20 economies without unity, UN Climate Head said. UN Climate Chief Simon Stiel on Wednesday warned G20 nations that their economies face decimation and they must overcome geopolitical divisions to tackle global warming. Stiel said the climate crisis was slipping down a crowded global agenda at a time when consensus was needed on how to help developing nations pay for clean energy and respond to extreme weather. The group of 20 developed and developing economies, including the United States, China, and India, face many geopolitical challenges, but this cannot be an excuse for timidity Amidst this worsening crisis, Stiel said in a London speech, all I can think of when I hear that, all I can think of, I'm sorry, my mind goes there every time when they start saying, we've got to unify to fix this climate crisis. I, I think of nukes. I think of the threat of nukes because we've got one side where they're all they're doing is threatening nukes. Oh, we're going to take you out. We're going to take you out. And then we have the, the climate change side. That's we've got to do something about this. You can't have both. You know, you can't blow up the Nord Stream pipeline and cause so much damage to the environment. They never said one word about climate change in regards to what they did to the Nord Stream pipeline, right? It's just that, sorry to say, that's most definitely, come on. Thank you. That's clown world. <laughs> that's clown world. My finger had a little delay there. <laughs> oh, listen to this one, you guys. Listen to this, Insider Paper. $65,000 golden teacup was stolen from a Japanese department store. A Japanese department store discovered a golden teacup worth over 10 million yen or $65,000 had been stolen on Thursday after it was showcased in an unlocked box. This teacup made of pure 24 karat gold went missing from a Tokyo outlet of the major department store chain, Takashimaya, where an event displaying an array of gold items for sale was being held. And all I, I'm looking at this, and all I'm thinking of is like, 
What does tea taste like out of a $65,000 golden teacup? I'm, I'm betting it tastes like tea. That's, that's what I'm betting. <laughs> because, I'm, you know, I think from now on, when I say, no thanks, I'll just have water, I might follow up with, in a $65,000 teacup, golden teacup. But I doubt it. <laughs> oh boy, it's crazy. Come get us, Lord, we're ready. How about we do a couple testimonies of the day? Uh, some of these testimonies I've been reading are from, I think I spent, I don't remember, I have got a bad memory, but either Christmas Day or New Year's Day, probably New Year's Day, I spent reading testimonies. And some of these, that video has like a third of the views of all my other videos because everyone was doing their family stuff on New Year's Day. So I've been reading, they're so good because I picked the best ones for that day. So I've been reading some of those a second time so more people can hear them because they're great. This is from Laura. Uh, my testimony, Laura Sims, March of 1982. I thought I was happy though something was missing, a piece of a puzzle just out of my grasp. I had a great husband and four beautiful children. Still, there was an emptiness deep inside. My grandmother died. She was a strong Christian. I thought it was just a silly superstition. I was missing her so much, so I dusted off my childhood Bible. Alone in my room, reading the, gas the Gospel of Matthew, I spoke out loud to her, God, Jesus, are you real? The room filled with a bright, blinding light. I was never the same after that night. At that moment, I knew in my heart that Jesus was there. He came and filled that void with his power. I am connected to God, my spirit reborn. Now Jesus is the light of my world. Amen. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Tano, in 2016, I denied God and Jesus in front of my friends and felt something leaving my body. After that, I spent the next years using drugs, drinking a lot, trying to fill that void, and even went to a psychiatrist and got some meds prescribed. Fast forward to last year, the meds were putting me so bad that I was thinking of ending my life and my childhood friend talked to me about God and I decided to follow again and immediately I felt a change and this year I decided to accept Christ and I even got baptized. No more meds needed. God bless. Bless Jesus Christ from Nazareth. Thank you for sharing that. Beautiful. I love how different all these testimonies are. I love how God uses so many different people and situations to draw people unto himself. It's beautiful. All right, let's do a few comments of the day. In God's time, I have a, well, they're talking about yesterday. If you missed it at the beginning of my video yesterday, we all took communion together. So if you didn't do that, you can watch that and do that. So some, a couple of these comments are about that. I have a communion service at home alone too. Somebody told me I shouldn't take communion by myself. And I said, I'm not. Jesus is with me. I love that. I love that. Don't let anyone tell you you can't take communion at home by yourself. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. He didn't say, do this in a temple or a church. And when he said that, he wasn't in a temple or a church. No, don't let anyone rob you of going to the table of the Lord by yourself with your king. It's beautiful. Broken believer, thank you for the communion. It's been years since I've had communion. I have health issues, so I cannot attend church. Communion means so much to me. I am so grateful. Praise God. Praise God. Ella, your communion brought tears to my eyes. I'm a shut-in, and I didn't know I was allowed to do communion on my own. I'm still unlearning a lot from the institutional church system. Thank you so much. I will do this daily too. Praise God, Ella. Praise God. It's awesome. Doug, as prophetic events continue to evolve and birth pains continue to increase and intensify throughout the world, that brings us closer to the end of this generation. Lord Jesus Christ is at the door and we are just waiting for him to open the door and take his true believers and church home to glory. Amen. Amen, Doug. Yeah, we're close. We are so close. We've seen every sign converge. Just amazing. We're just waiting. He's going to come in his perfect timing. 
warrior of God. Holy Spirit, goosebumps while doing communion and repeating after you. Praise the Father. Do this in remembrance of me. God bless you, Brother Tom. Appreciated that so much this morning. Praise God. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to do it. Basketball. That's the name of his account. Basketball. Anyone's doing, I love this, listen to this, anyone's doing will never be enough for salvation. No one will ever be better than Jesus' finished work. Amen, brother, amen. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone is the worthy one. Hallelujah. Thank you. You're right. You're right. Jesus Christ alone is the worthy one. Some people can't handle that. Some people can't handle the fact that Jesus paid it all. They just, they have to feel like they have to contribute something. They just can't take an unearned gift. And we're saved by grace, an unearned gift, through faith in Christ Jesus. Some people just can't, they just can't, it's just too hard for them. You know, they, they have to feel like I'm doing my part. I'm being very good. Lord, see what I'm doing? And the Lord's like, see what I did? He paid it all. I want to talk about Jesus paying it all. This is the most important part of the video. Because these videos do get forwarded to a lot of unbelievers who they tune in and they hear the crazy stuff going in the on in the world and they sometimes they hang on to this part of the video and I'm just trying to address them and kind of beg them look just take it serious okay what I have a, what I have to say right now just listen seriously and then then you'll have a choice to make at the end sorry I'm praying right now um The Lord has put it on my heart the last year. I've been doing this channel for two years. I would say about the last year to present the gospel, try to do it in the most simple way. There are many channels that get into many layers of the gospel, but it's been laid on my heart to keep it simple that Jesus paid for your sins with his blood because really that kind of sums it all up. We're all born sinners. We're born with a sin nature. When Adam fell, we all inherited a sin nature. And sometimes when non-believers hear the word sinner or you're, you know, they, they immediately, it's, it's offensive to people who don't understand that sinning is just falling short of perfection because God expects and demands complete perfection. And we can't do that. We fall short of God's perfection. And that falling short, I think in the Greek it's called hamartia, is sin. Falling short of God's perfect standards. So you say, well, how can, I, how can we attain that then if God expects perfection? He gave us Jesus. He sent Jesus, his only begotten son. And Jesus came here and he put on flesh. And he walked the earth so perfectly. Man, just humble. And, and you got to realize in John chapter one, among other places, it talks about in the beginning was the word, Jesus, and the word was with God and the word was God. And it says that nothing created was created without him, meaning Jesus spoke and he created everything out of nothing. Jesus is the creator. Now, some people will argue with me and say, no, 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 God, the father created. It's like Jesus, the spirit and the father are three in one. But, but in John 1, it talks about the Word was with God and the Word was God. And he spoke everything into existence. And that same Jesus who has that power is the one who humbled himself and came here knowing I'm going to pay for their sins. Knowing that he was going to have to shed his blood to cover our sins, to pay for them, to wash us white as snow. And that's what the belief in Jesus shed blood does. Once you understand, yes, I'm a sinner. I don't want to face Jesus on judgment day with unpaid sins and he paid them. 
okay, I have belief that that blood will wash me white as snow and give me a clean slate, because that's what it does. And then you believe what Jesus did, his finished work, that he came here, he lived perfectly, he never sinned, yet he died a criminal's death. Even though he never sinned, he was an innocent man, God-man, fully God, fully man. And they brutalized him, and then they nailed him to the cross. And he shed that blood, that once for all time payment for sin. He's never going on the cross again. When Jesus returns at his second coming, he's coming in power. He's coming in power to rule and reign with perfect justice and love. But he's not going to the cross again. So please, if you can't forgive yourself of some sin and you think Jesus can't forgive, you know, I've done a lot of sins, Tom, but these two here, no, nah, I can't. I, I can't even walk with the Lord because I was so awful. You're basically saying Jesus didn't pay a harsh enough price for your particular sin. And that's that's so wrong on so many levels. You know, you're really telling Jesus, like, go back up there again. It's like, no. Nope. You either believe that that blood is powerful enough to remove every single sin or you're going to have a problem with Jesus not going back on the cross. That blood is able. That blood is powerful. I call it the most beautiful substance that ever graced earth. The blood of Jesus that can rescue you. Tom, you talk about the blood too much. I, I talk about it a lot because many others aren't talking about it enough. It's an integral part of our salvation. We're saved by grace, the unearned gift of God through faith in Christ Jesus and faith in that blood. So once you say, Jesus, I believe your blood will wash me white as snow. I'm a sinner. I need these sins washed away. And I believe your blood that you shed does that. And I believe in your finished work going to the cross, dying, being placed in a tomb, and resurrecting on the third day. He's alive again. He was seen by over 500 people. If he didn't rise again, we wouldn't be talking about Jesus today. I can guarantee you that. And he's coming back. But once you believe that, you're rescued. You're born again. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll have new life because Jesus said, Behold, I make all things new. He made this wretched man new. And I will praise him for eternity for it. All the chances he gave me. All the times I ran away. But when I finally came back, you know what? He met me in the road and he hugged me. Just like the father and the prodigal son. He wasn't wagging his finger. So many of you guys put Jesus on a shelf you think I can't go back there look what I've done he'll meet you and he'll hug you and he wants you to come back he has an incredible future for you incredible now if you hear all this and you're like I don't need this no this is crazy like I said a little earlier you will face Jesus on judgment day and it will be the most terrifying moment of your entire existence sorry to say because you will be kneeling before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You will most likely see the scars or wounds in his hands. And you will think, this is the one that I was told when I was on earth with breath in my lungs. I was told he paid for my sins with his blood. And I said, nope, I don't want that payment. You'll know. And then he'll look at you and he'll say, away from me, I never knew you. The most terrifying words, I, I get, I, every time I say that, I get bad chills up my spine. I can't imagine looking at the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know he's God. And he says that to you. And you're like, where am I going? When the God of the universe is rejecting me, where am I going? And you end up going to eternal separation from God. It's called hell in the Bible. It goes by a few names. Then you end up spending eternity wishing you could have one more breath in your lungs to say, yes, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in the power of your blood and your finished work. But it never comes. So today is a day of salvation. I've laid it all out. I hope, I really, really, really hope you will say yes to Jesus today. 
I really hope you'll place your trust in your belief in him. I hope you repent today. That means going from unbelief to belief, going from this direction to that direction. That's what repentance is. It's a 180 degree turn. And I hope today is the day. I hope it is. But, all right. I think that's it. I think that's what I got for you today. I hope you guys are well. I'm so ready. You guys ready? I think most people that believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, I think most of them realize we're in the last days. Am I saying, you know, am I saying, well, today is Thursday, so we're in the last day. So by Monday, we'll be raptured. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we, you get this understanding when you look at what's going on in the world that you know we're living in the very last days. We've watched all the signs converge and the world is getting more and more wicked every day. The lies and deception are cranking up. The wars and rumors of wars are insane. And Jesus is coming very soon. It can't get, you know, it can't get completely crazy chaos because that would surpass what Bible prophecy says. That happens during the seven year tribulation. And we're here, we're out of here before that seven year tribulation. So hold on gang, all right? If we're not raptured today, and you know what? Today is a perfectly good day for the rapture, but if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.